from Cole Pennick. Questions about anarcho-capitalism. Hey, Adam, my name is Cole, and I'm 15 years old. I have been watching your show for a very long time on YouTube, and I enjoy doing so. Your commentary on the current social situation, I hate using the word political in the United States, and the ideals of anarcho-capitalism intrigue me greatly, but I've yet to fully label myself as an anarcho-capitalist. Well, me too. I don't, I don't apply labels. I don't like labels. No, but if you want to uh, embrace this philosophy of universal nonviolence, then yes, anarcho-capitalism is one appropriate term to encompass that. I am most definitely a libertarian, but I refrain from going the extra step from just enough to had enough when it comes to government. And I love this. I can tell after reading just the first few sentences of your email, Cole, you're already there. You know, you just have a few little things that, that you need to clear out of your brain, a few bad ideas to get rid of. Now, if you say that you're a libertarian, now here you have it with a capital L. And I guess you're saying that you're associating with the Libertarian Party, which is not libertarian. Like, really, the Libertarian Party is no longer a libertarian organization. There are libertarians within it, but it is a political party where people of lots of different philosoph uh, political philosophies come together. Libertarian is a very, very specific political philosophy, also known as anarcho-capitalism. So if you mean libertarian with a small l, then you're just sort of contradicting yourself. But you also capitalized anarcho-capitalism so I'm not sure where you're coming from here, but if you're a libertarian, you're also an anarcho-capitalist, if you understand what it means. Libertarian belief in freedom, anarcho-capitalism, a specific system of uh, freedom being applied consistently. So, here is why. When it comes to a society, I know full well that the vast majority are good people. Only a tiny minority commits crimes and attacks the rights of others, the U.S. government being part of that group. No, 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 no. Well, yes, it's a part... But it's actually, and, and you say only a tiny minority commits crimes and attacks the rights of others. It's really not a tiny minority. Government's pretty big. The enforcement class of government is lots and lots of people. I mean, hundreds of thousands, depending on how you want to count them. Cops, millions, soldiers, millions of people. So, no, it's, it's not. And it's not small. It's not a tiny minority. And when you say the U.S. government being part of that group, you're like acknowledging that, like, yes, there are criminals and then there's, there's within that, there's government. No, no, no. It's, there's criminals, and, you know, 99% of that is government. It's like, yeah, there's criminals, and then there's this tiny group of, you know, private criminals, individual criminals acting on their own without the sanction of government. Just feel like we have to make that distinction here. However, I feel that if the United States were to not have any federal government, people who would resist anarchy would create small pockets of tyranny all over the place. What is stopping a small town in Alabama from becoming a theocracy where gays are burned at the stake? You're right. Nothing. Really? Libertarianism does not prescribe the guaranteed solution for government never coming back. The fact that a good idea exists doesn't mean that a bad idea cannot be reintroduced. But again, your point here is not a justification for government by any stretch of the imagination. If government is a cancer and you think, well, let's eradicate the cancer, is the fact that, oh, wait, wait, that cancer might come back, so we might as well just keep it. You know, we might as well just leave it there. See, the, the argument doesn't hold any water. Your response would probably be gun owners would resist it slash overthrow it slash peaceful protestation, something of that nature, which is a valid argument. Now, it's true that there is a, valid, a validity to what you have in the prescription that we are offering in terms of how do you stay healthy as a society? How do you keep violence uh, to a minimal aberration as opposed to something that is institutionalized in government? And it's, it's about a deeper paradigm shift. It's about people universally embracing the values of libertarianism, of self-ownership, non-slavery, of the non-aggression principle, of universal non-violence. So what would stop a small town in Alabama from becoming a theocracy? Now, this is actually, there, there is a, a, a better answer even than what you suggest, although you're not far off here. It's really the market. You know, if, if the rest of society universally recognizes that violence against individuals is not tolerated, then if some town says, you know what, all right, and by the way, we're using this inaccurate language, some town, a town doesn't say anything, but like, say some group of people in a town take over and violently start oppressing people, there's actually a better answer, and it's kind of along with, you know, gun owners, but if there are people who say, well, we don't want to, these, we want to be protected from these violent thugs in our town, then, you know, you can have a de higher defense agency or, or someone to come in and actually protect you or get rid of the people who are being violent when they're uh, making themselves an immediate threat. There's nothing wrong with that. Government doesn't prevent this from happening. Government is the worst version of this. So, as he says, he goes on, Cole, 
The only problem I see with that is there are no unifying rules by which all by which the overthrowers would be doing it by. They may not necessarily be pro freedom at all, but in fact democratic socialists or some other idiocy. Okay, no, no, you're certainly right that this is a threat, just the way that the United States government imposing democracy or socialism or whatever it is that you want to call American corporatism on other countries is a is a, is a is a threat, right? So there, but there is a universal. Um, there, there are unifying rules in a sense, and it's really one rule uh, that is the, the non-aggression principle. And that's the definition of a stateless society, one in which everyone has embraced that and doesn't tolerate it among anyone, be it government or private actors. So he goes on, the government of DC, for example, is a tyrannical institution on all scales. However, their handgun ban would never have been overturned if not for the U.S. Supreme Court. If there was no Supreme Court, no local laws could be officially challenged by a set institution that is bound to follow, though they may not always, the U.S. Constitution. By effect, if you suspend all resistance to tyranny by use of force or peaceful protest, the society is constantly violent, uh, is a constantly violent place of changing tyrannies by different radical or otherwise groups. I am well aware of all the crimes and terrible things that government does, but I do not oppose the universality of a document like the Constitution and a government that is actually designed to enforce its propagation. Well, you should, if you're a libertarian, you should oppose a central authority that is based on coercion, which is what it is, which is what the imposition of a system of force or a universal set of rules through an authority as opposed to the authority that is the truth has as a, a, an inherent problem with it that is anti-freedom. So you're saying, again, you know, the Articles of Confederation are the same way. They are still a federal document. In short, I think that regardless of uh, region, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, etc., uh, this prevents thousands of localized extremist tyrannies from replacing a universally, generally moderate tyranny by comparison to, say, the Soviet Union. I am asking you to respond to what I have said and to this question. What is anarcho-capitalism's response to localized tyrannies forming after the elimination of a federal government? Because I like your insight into things. I would like to tell you to feel free to be a scathing critic of my beliefs, but as a human being, you are already completely free to do so. Thank you. I hope that my thoughts were marginally clear enough for comprehension. Thanks for reading. I hope you convinced me, Cole. P.S. It'd be really cool to have a shout out on ABTM, but seriously, you should do it. All right. Shout out, Cole Pennick. Thanks for writing. So to answer your question, what is the response to localized tyrannies forming after the elimination of a federal government? And the answer is a change in the paradigm will prevent that from happening in the first place. But again, it is a potential threat. It is a very real possibility. So again, we, let's look at the metaphor of, of you know, society as a body, a healthy body. Let's say that government, a federal government, is a universal tumor, right? It's a systematic problem. And, and you're failing to mention here, while you point out that there is this benefit through the Supreme Court of enforcing a, a universal standard that, of course, you know it does at the behest of the super class and special interests and is subject to all of the corruption. Again, so you're pointing out like, Hey, guess what? While we have this giant cancer systematic through our system, this blood cancer that's going to kill us and is violating the, the health of our body in so many other ways, at least it prevents us from, say, getting uh, dysentery. Yeah, while I have this cancer, somehow I can't get dysentery. Or I won't fart. Yeah, like my body doesn't fart when I have this incredible, crazy blood tumor. I don't have local theocracies as a problem. So you get rid of this blood tumor, and now you have, oh my gosh, you might get a pimple on your ass. Well, guess what? When you don't have, when you're not dying of a systematic blood cancer, you can pop that pimple and you can deal with it and you can move on. The significance of your problem here is really insignificant and does not justify a central authority. The pros don't outweigh the cons. So your analysis, while you point out, yes, there is this slight benefit that we're tied together, that we're all subject to the same tyranny as opposed to subject to unique local tyrannies. Again, doesn't really hold any water as an argument or as a challenge to the idea of a universally nonviolent society, doesn't change the basic laws of physics or the basic laws of human interaction by which nonviolence is preferable to coercion every time. I, I don't agree with those statistics at all. I have never seen that. We've done this exact same thing to him well, fine. before. We'll fix this the and fucking old fashioned way. Fight back, fight back, fight back. We are the 99% and we coming for you.